Welcome to the Lockbox Vacuum Jig installation video. Step one is to be sure that your lap from the deck side lamination has been ground down to accept your patches to come later. Using the supplied tail thickness gauge, check for appropriate tail thickness by sliding the gauge up the stringer towards the shaper's rear mark. Before routing, always inspect the foam vacuum barriers on the underside of the jig to be sure that they are intact and have no debris such as chunks of stringer stuck to them. Starting with the rear fin, place the jig onto the board roughly over the area to be routed. And then plug in the airline. You'll notice that the centering site has several markings. Three vertical lines and one horizontal line to line the jig up for lock boxes and two more settings for 8.5 and 10.5 longboard boxes. Using the middle of the three vertical lines, center the jig on the stringer on both ends along with the horizontal line marked lock box lined up with the shaper's rear mark. While using one hand to apply pressure over the vacuum chambers, Use the other hand to turn both valves forward to the on position and suction the jig to the board. Always double check to make sure the jig is securely vacuumed to the board before routing. The first cut is the elliptical portion of the box so install the ellipse template onto the jig. At this point place the router onto the jig in the middle of the template and push the bit down until it contacts the surface of the board. Then lock the router in the down position. Loosen the wing nut for the adjustment bar, then grab the outer adjustment dial and rotate it to the left until the adjustment bar bottoms out on the height pedestal. Next, grab the inner numbered dial and rotate it to the left until it reads zero. The router is now set to zero cut depth. The depth required for lock boxes is 3 16 of an inch and the lines on the inner dial are in 1 16th increments. So rotate the outer dial to the left exactly three lines. Raise the router up and slide it all the way to the rear of the ellipse template and start the router. Plunge straight down drilling a hole into the stringer then move all the way forward and drill the stringer at the front portion of the hole. At this point, lock the router in the down position and slowly pull the router back towards you, removing the stringer. Once the stringer is removed, continue routing around the template in a clockwise direction while keeping slight pressure against the wall of the template. Using the exhaust line, you can blow off the board and check to make sure that all material has been removed. Now install the cavity template onto the jig with the small notch to the left. Place the router on the jig, move to the front of the hole and plunge straight down slowly, letting the router do the work. Keeping the router loose, continue plunging the stringer in small cuts while gradually moving to the back of the template. Once all stringer material has been removed, continue around the template making sure to remove all material. Remove the cavity template, blow off the hole to make sure all material has been removed. Using an installation fin plugged into a box, dry fit the box and check for adequate depth. The ideal route depth is slightly below flush as you see here. Once adequate depth is achieved, remove the jig by placing your thumb over the end of the exhaust line which will pop the jig off of the board. You'll notice the board being adjusted back for the front boxes to always keep the router over the rack. Now place the jig over the front fin marks and install the centering site. You'll notice that there is a letter R and a letter L actually in reverse on the centering site 
just below the horizontal line marked lock box. Since we are doing the right side box, we will set the jig on the inner line marked with the letter R for both front and rear marks. With the rail side valve off and the stringer side valve on, apply pressure to the stringer side of the jig until it vacuums down. Remove the centering site and install the ellipse template. Use the same method to re-zero the router as you used on the center box. Remember that the rocker can be very different from the front boxes to the rear box, so re-zeroing the router is recommended. On side boxes or boxes where no stringer is present, never begin routing on the edge or at the front or rear of the hole. Pick a spot in the middle to begin your route. When switching from the ellipse template to the cavity template for side boxes, always make sure that the notch on the cavity template is facing away from the rails or towards the stringer or middle of the board. On traditional center stringered boards, no plunging is necessary to remove material on the cavity cut. For parabolic type stringered boards, Follow the cavity routing method used on thruster center stringered boards. Installing a lockbox just slightly below flush or roughly 1 64th of an inch deeper than flush, you can comfortably adjust your fins cant approximately 1 to 2 degrees in either direction due to the box having a curve or roll on the underside of the box. By increasing the depth by another 1 64th of an inch, you can gain another 1 to 2 degrees of cant adjustment. However, it is not recommended to ever install lock boxes deeper than 1 32nd beyond flush. Remove the jig and place it over the other side box and repeat the same steps. You'll notice that for the left side box, we are setting the jig to the opposite side vertical line. Vacuuming down the jig for the left side is done the same as for the right side, but with the vacuum valves reversed. Don't forget that the notch on the cavity template always faces inwards, so just spin the template around 180 degrees before you route. Any leftover strands of glass can be removed with sandpaper by quickly passing around the routed hole with some fine grit paper. After thoroughly blowing off all of your routed holes, you are now ready to install the boxes.